Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take this pile of parts and put it together to come up with the ultimate air assist. So let me explain that a little bit. Once I got my air compressor hooked up to my laser back there, I got kind of sick of having to constantly uh, disconnect it. So basically, in between jobs as I'm setting things up, you know, if the air compressor is on and the hose is connected, it's just running straight throughout the nozzle. So the air compressor had to constantly run. Now there's a, a number of uh, people out there that have come up with um, you know, these uh, uh, solenoid-based systems to uh, turn on and off the air, but uh, most of them have a, have a constant bypass. So there's low pressure air that's constantly running. And then if you have everything set up and when you uh, start a job and you've toggled air assist on in the light burn settings, then it'll flip that solenoid and you'll get high pressure if you need it. But as soon as the job runs, you're back to just blowing low pressure air out. And so that compressor just has to keep on running. Now, in my case, I hadn't done any of that yet. Um, so as soon as I hook up the hose, I got just 30 PSI running and my air compressor is going to constantly go um, depending on which one I had set up. So I figured there's got to be a better way. So I kind of scoured the internet. I looked and saw what uh, other people had done um, for the other systems. And I figured out how to make this work. And uh, basically my system uses two of these pneumatic valves. And that allows you to have, uh, when you start a job, you can set whether you want low pressure air or high pressure air to go. And then when the job finishes, uh, both solenoids close and you're no longer uh, expending any air. And so your compressor will just shut off and wait for the next job. So we're gonna jump right into that and I'm gonna show you how this system works. So come along. Let's go over the parts that you'll need for this installation. Uh, I'll link all of this down below uh, and do realize you will probably need uh, a few other things like wire if you don't already have some. Um, I'll try and uh, put a link there uh, as well if uh, you're absolutely out of all that kind of thing. So the first thing is going to be this air tubing kit. Uh, this kit here comes with a lot of the parts that you'll need. So you're going to get the more than enough air tubing. It's going to come with a bunch of these uh, connectors and it also comes with this tubing cutter that you'll use to make uh, the cuts to your tubing. The next uh, piece, which I know this is empty right now, but and I'll show you in a minute, is going to be uh, the little air pressure regulator so that you can have a low pressure side. And then you're going to need two of these pneumatic valves. So again, you need two of these guys uh, for this setup. And then you're going to need the uh, six uh, pin connector or terminal block that uh, fits in uh, to the laser machine and that's what you're going to use to connect your pneumatic valves uh, to the laser to control it. So let's go take a look at uh, how this is, gets all set up and then I'll step you through um, how to wire uh, everything together and uh, the installation. Now if you're curious as to what I'm using to supply air to my laser, um, I basically have two compressors here. For smaller jobs, I use this Ultra Quiet. It is a two gallon um, 1.2 horsepower. This is just a Harbor Freight uh, compressor. And it works fine if you're not trying to, you know, provide uh, basically cutting uh, pressure for a long time. It will, it will supply, you know, 25, 30 PSI, no problem, but it will run continuously. It will never take a break. And these compressors are not really designed to run uh, at 100% uh, continuously. So if I'm going to do a bigger job that I need that higher pressure, then I'm going to uh, connect my Craftsman. This is a 5 horsepower, 22 gallon, and it can supply the you know, 25, 30 PSI, and it'll run for a little bit, fill up the tank, supply the... Uh, the laser and it is able to take a break and uh, it will cycle on and off as it's uh, providing that cutting power. So I've got both of these compressors uh, that I can choose from 
and then it's just a matter of which hose I connect. Right now the uh, smaller compressor with that red fitting is connected and you can see the other hose is laying there. So if I need to hook up the uh, 5 horsepower compressor then it's just a matter of swapping out those hoses. So this is the finished product here. You can see uh, down here toward the bottom of my machine I've got everything installed. So you've got uh, both pneumatic valves installed, all the blue tu tubing, and then um, you can see those two blue and white wires here in the center of the screen. Those are the control wires that have uh, connect are now connected uh, to uh, the Ruida controller right over here. So that's the terminal block that you're going to use to connect up to your wind and status pins on the Ruida controller. And uh, let's uh, get into how that all happens. The diode that you're going to want to put into the, this machine or into this relay will go in as follows. Uh, every diode is going to be marked with a band. And this band for this particular relay, you want the band to be on the same side as uh, the leg here that's going to the, to the light emitting diode. And then you're going to use this as your positive. So this will get connected to 24 volts DC. And then the side without the band, that'll be your negative, And that'll go to ground. So you can see here, get a little bit of contrast when I put it up against the uh, metal block. But um, I've just gone ahead and bent the legs uh, using my needle nose pliers here at 90 degrees. So now I can just uh, drop this in uh, to the holes. And then for my wiring... I've already gone ahead and tinned uh, my water, my, ah, can't speak today. I've already tinned my wires, uh, just, you know, put some solder on there, uh, and that's going to keep them from fraying or anything like that. And so in my case, I'm going to use the white uh, stripe here to indicate positive. So I'm just pointing that out now because I'm about to turn them around and you won't be able to see that uh, white wire. But um, so now that that's, that's tinned, I can go ahead and just simply oh, try not to bump the camera too much here but I'll back that screw out so that I can drop my my wire in here uh, and hopefully the diode still makes contact that could be a, a I probably should have put that a little more behind the wire so that they both are getting pressed up against the metal frame we'll see if that if I need to uh, rectify this situation here in a bit but uh, then doing the same oh you know what no well actually these uh, I was gonna say I'm I forgot to run my wire through the uh, through the cover but um, these wires are free on both ends ah. so I can always just run the end through there so there we go now my again that's going to be my ground wire and now that's in there and make sure yeah the the leg of the diodes is uh, being compressed uh, by this so it's fine it's not gonna it's not moving at all so we should be fine and again that diode is just there um, when the coil that activates the solenoid in here when you when you uh, turn it off or you know your machine no longer is sending the uh, signal uh, for the the air assess then the magnetic field around this coil collapses and that induces a current back in to the wiring which would go back to your controller and so having this diode here gives this a path uh, for that to flow um, instead of going back to the uh, to your controller this diode is going to dissipate that energy and so that's going to keep your controller uh, happy so there you go before I put all this back together uh, in case you're curious this the, the piece with the wiring will come off this uh, slides right on slides right on there but uh, the way that this that this is this works these two uh, positions here are for your coil 
and then this third one is basically a ground um, and it wouldn't be the ground that you connect to the laser uh, for your voltage source but if you wanted to ground this to something else this would be more like a chassis ground so you can see this is the screw that uh, holds this on so it's grounded to that and then this is also grounded uh, to the rest of the metallic uh, pieces here so that's what this third pin is for but uh, we're not going to be using that one Now to put the cover on, uh, this is pretty simple. There's a couple pieces in here. You've got a rubber washer, and then um, you have this nut that's going to compress this uh, washer and just hold everything in. Um, I, we're not worried about this being watertight per se, but uh, it's just going to be a, a simple matter of running, running our wires through this case and one thing i did notice at least the way that i have put uh, everything together here uh, because of having tinned uh, wires so with the solder on there and then the diode uh, just the way everything's placed these screws stick out just ever so slightly Let's see if we can get that to focus they stick out ever so slightly and that's going to make putting this cover back on just a little bit tight. It's going to uh, kind of press on there. So getting that back off would be a little bit of a headache, um, but I don't plan on really taking this off again. And so once that's on there, then go ahead and put on your rubber washer, run that down, down the line. And then your last step will be to uh, put on your threaded nut here. And obviously we want the thread side to go toward uh, where it needs to end up eventually. And this will go on either way. I think when it's shipped, this piece is actually down here, but that would uh, interfere because I need, that's your inlet and outlet uh, for the airline. So I don't want that uh, to go there. Um, there is one other item that I'll point out here. I don't intend to change the orientation unless for some reason I need to. I haven't 100% decided how I'm going to put this in the machine yet. Obviously by the time this video is done I will have made that decision. But this knob up here, this will unscrew and this just basically loosens uh, this and this can then be turned if you wanted to. I think you could you know, change the orientation. So if I wanted to have my lines kind of perpendicular to all of this, it would just be a matter of loosening this, spinning it to, you know, and it, it still locks in there. So now you can see that my airline is going to come in here and then go out there. And then this will control uh, when that comes on and off. So that's something that if you uh, run into an issue, uh, maybe some clearance or something like that, it's always a way that you can change things up uh, so that you can have a little more flexibility on the way uh, this works. This is how we're going to set up the wiring. So here on connector one, this is our output port. Pin six is the plus 24 volt pin, and that is going to connect to the positive side of our high pressure solenoid here the negative wire is going to go to pin 5 for wind. So when things are set in light burn to enable air assist, the high pressure solenoid will let air through to the laser head. Now not pictured here uh, because this isn't, this diagram is just a general diagram in the Ruida controller, um, but we're going to use pin 4 which is the status so normally you've probably seen some of the lasers have the like um, it's kind of a stack of lights that show when jobs are in operation um, that's the, the pin that we're going to use so pin 4 is going to go to the negative uh, side of our second solenoid which is our low pressure air and then the positive will also get connected uh, to pin six, like I showed you in the um, kind of the general outline of how uh, all of the 
solenoids and valves and connectors uh, were going to be set up. So again, very basic, um, really four wires, two of them, your two positive wires are going to uh, pin six here, and then high pressure is gonna go to pin five for wind, uh, the negative will go to pin five, and then uh, low pressure, the negative will go to, to pin four. So that is the, the sample of the way the electrical wiring will be done for this project. Okay, let's go over the wiring. Here we have the terminal block. This is what you're going to use to connect to the Ruida controller. And the, uh, the wiring order up here at the top is going to be pin 6. This is your positive 24 volts. The next pin 5 is for wind. And then pin 4 is status. Now all you're going to have to do, you've got your wiring here. You can see, again, this is the opposite side of the wire from what we've connected to uh, the pneumatic valves or the solenoids that we wired up uh, a little bit earlier. And in my case, if you remember, I'm using uh, these the wires that have this white line on them. I've used that to indicate positive. So these two wires, we're just going to uh, connect together. So I'm just gonna twist these two together because those are both gonna go to pin uh, six. And then you wanna make sure that you give your wires a twist here. That just keeps them from fraying because the last thing you want is for a to have a stray wire uh, that kind of jumps out in between here and ends up shorting out another wire because that's not going to be good for your controller. So again, all uh, with these guys, we're just going to uh, loosen these set screws, push the wires in, and then uh, tighten it back up and you'll be all set. So I forgot that these were uh, standard and not Phillips, so I had to run and grab another screwdriver. But uh, as you can see here, when I turn this left, it uh, increases the opening there. And now I have the ability uh, to, put my, to put my wires in. So again, pin six is going to end up here and then we can tighten that down. And I would recommend what I'm actually going to do is clip these a little bit so that uh, you don't wanna have this wire, uh, this bare wire hanging out um, at the edge of your connector. So we wanna minimize that as much as possible. So go ahead and clip these down a little bit before you put them in. So I've got my diagonal cutters here and we can see that I've got probably just, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch extra. So we're gonna just clip that away, make a little mess there, knock over our light, which is always nice. But now you can see the, uh, the length of the wire here has been uh, decreased and we'll put that down here. Now with this, uh, the one where you have the two wires together, you'll probably not be able to get, uh, to get it so far down that you don't have any uh, of the wiring exposed just because of how thick it's gonna end up, but do your best uh, for that. It's gonna be your single wires that uh, you can really effect best and so then we're going to take number five here and I'm also going to cut that one down now obviously if you don't strip these so long you won't have to cut them down but uh, I wanted to your the ones that you twist together probably helps to make those a little bit longer it gives you gives you something to work with initially so our number five wire now you can see I can push that nice and uh, to where there's no copper exposed on the top. Now you don't want to put too push it too far because if you hit the if you get this down to where um, 
you're trying to compress the insulation, then you're not going to make a good electrical contact here. And you'll run into problems and you'll know it when this doesn't work. And then finally, wire number four. And we'll clip that one down, retwist it, and then put wire number four where it belongs and push this all down and then tighten that up. And now we have our wiring done. And again, we've got both of our pneumatic valves connected. The positive lines are connected up here to pin six and then pin five is wind and pin four is status. So pin five is going to control our high pressure solenoid and uh, pin four is going to be our low pressure solenoid. Really quick, we'll go over the basic setup that I'm going to use for this air assist upgrade as far as the, we'll call it the air plumbing goes. So once I go from my air compressor through the uh, air filters or the, um, the water separators, I'll come out using the uh, blue tubing and that's going to go into this first piece which is a, a Y connector. Now most of these connectors I got in a kit. I'll uh, put the link below and the kit comes with a whole um, a whole bag of parts and so most of these pieces with the blue connector uh, minus a couple that I'll point out uh, that you'll have to get separately are going to come in this kit. So we're going to go from the Y connector and then we're going to go through these uh, threaded guys. Each one of the relay modules comes with two of these. I've already, you can see I've already installed one and I'll go over how to do those here in a minute. But so from my Y split, we're going to have a, a piece of tubing and the length of that is just going to depend on where I finally decide to put this in the machine. And so what I've done here on my relays is I've gone ahead and I've labeled them just to make things a little bit simpler. So you can see this one I've labeled as low, uh, low P or for low pressure. And that's going to go to pin four, which is the status pin on the uh, Ruida controller. Basically what's that, what that's going to allow is whenever a job starts, this uh, solenoid will open and that'll let me have low pressure air. So if I'm just doing engraving, uh, and I just need to keep the nozzle clear, then I can have low pressure air going. My second relay, I've labeled high P or high pressure and pin five, and that's the wind. That's gonna go to the wind connector. And I'll show you that wiring here in a minute. Um, but if you trigger or if you set uh, air assist in light burn, pin five will go and that'll uh, open this solenoid. So. If I, if I set light burn uh, for air assist, I will get high pressure and I can use that uh, for cuts. And then if I don't set it, then I will always have this low pressure uh, solenoid open. And the benefit of this system over others that only use one is what I find is, you know, most of the time when I'm doing a job, um, there's a lot of setup time and I don't want to I don't want to have to keep turning on and off my compressor so I would rather the compressor turn on fill up but not have that constant flow of air that's just leaking and not leaking but you know coming out of the nozzle and causing us to uh, causing my compressor to constantly run when I'm not even uh, you know doing any engraving or cutting so this system allows me to only have air flowing through the nozzle when I'm actually uh, doing a job. So I guess back to uh, back to the specifics, I guess I'll let that guy lay down because he doesn't want to stand up. So coming out the other side, what we're going to do, again, we're going to have uh, these and then connected to our uh, blue tubing. And then this is the uh, other piece that you need. And this is just a, a, a small valve. And this is going to be connected um, up here to the low pressure side. 
because otherwise these would have the exact same air pressure. But this will allow me to turn this down so that I can get you know just a couple of PSI out um, of the low pressure side. And then those will both, both the low pressure and high pressure sides will feed back into this Y um, right here. And then this will connect out to the uh, hose that actually goes to the laser module or to the laser to the laser head um, and so that is the basic setup now over here on the connector and again I can link these as well um, this is the connector that fits right into the uh, Ruida control module this section is blank currently on my laser and most lasers because uh, this is the uh, the output um, section and so both of the positive lines for these two solenoids are over here which is the uh, plus 24 volt line it's pin number six and then pin number five is the wind so that's going to go to my high pressure solenoid and then pin number four is status and that goes um, basically that will go alive anytime a job is actually running so that's how that's set up really quick we're going to talk about how to connect um, these inserts into the solenoid. So as mentioned, this kit comes with uh, two of these uh, adapters to go into the body here and then that's going to allow you to attach the solenoids to your uh, air hose and again this is part of another kit that comes with the air hose and all the multiple connectors and cutters etc but if you've never had the pleasure of dealing with um, thread tape before that's what this is so it's just a very thin tape that uh, helps fill in gaps now this has already got a kind of a thread compound on it which serves a very similar purpose um, but I say you know why not why not be double sure so that you don't have air leaks because in the end uh, an air leak is just going to cause your compressor compressor to run uh, more because it's gonna it's gonna lose um, uh, pressure when these solenoids are closed and it's kind of the whole reason I'm doing this so uh, first thing to to realize or to know if you've never used uh, thread tape before you want to put it on uh, clockwise and that will help you um, it, it'll keep the tape on as you thread this into the body if you go counterclockwise um, you're basically pulling the tape off uh, as you go so it only takes one or two uh, wraps to go around and you do want to be careful not to uh, let this flop over there because that's just going to restrict your airflow so you want to just get a couple of, uh, like I said, couple wraps around. Doesn't have to be super tight. And uh, once you get those wraps, then I'm just going to use a, a knife here. I'm going to cut through that, and then we're just going to pat it down. Now it's fine. It doesn't matter if it goes over, um, you know, like right here on the edges. That's fine. That's no big deal. This will anything that's not in the threads uh, once we get it in is going to be probably it's just going to sit there or wear off and then obviously is when you're putting this in um, you want to make sure that it's uh, that it's squared up and that you're not cross threading anything so the due to having this uh, thread compound on here already it's going to be pretty tight to get these in, you're only going to be able to go so far uh, finger tight. So at that point, just grab yourself a, a small wrench. I've got a uh, adjustable wrench here, and then you can just give it a couple of turns. Again, you don't have to really crank these things down too hard, but you'll feel the you'll feel the resistance there, and you can get those. Get those installed and you should be all set. Before we get everything prettied up, I want to show you what we're looking at here for the uh, 
close to finished installation, so I will kind of start with the uh, path of the airflow and then uh, talk a little bit about wiring. So, back over here on the uh, back of my sh machine, you can see that I've got my air regulator and there's a little water trap here. So, from my compressor, this uh, red hose is coming and it's presently set at 25 PSI and then that goes to that blue hose that you see there which runs through the back of the machine and then comes out on this side that hose is going to run down and as we went over in the uh, setup overview earlier you can see now I have the, uh, the Y installed here so we're splitting I've got my high pressure solenoid right there uh, which is going to get connected to the wind and then on the back side is the low pressure solenoid coming out the front. We now have our, um, I guess you could call it a little pressure regulator here that allow us to cut down on the airflow. And that's gonna be, you know, just a couple of PSI for engraving. And then uh, the high pressure runs straight through. So back into the Y. And then I'm gonna probably trim this in a little bit once I uh, have tested and make sure everything is set. But this is the tube that runs up uh, through the machine and then ultimately to the uh, laser head. So it is all installed as far as the electric goes. We, we already talked about how these are wired and I showed you the diagram. This will all get um, routed through these channels. That's why I have the uh, the parts off but uh, coming up here this is our output connector and the two positives for each solenoid are over here on pin 6 for 24 volts and then my high pressure is connected right here to pin number 5 which is wind and then my low pressure is connected to pin number 4 which is status and I'll show you here in a minute of what this looks like when the machines are running or when the machine is running but uh, first there's one thing that we need to cover and that's going to be a setting in light burn. Now before we can test our new installation and get our uh, solenoids working there's a setting that we have to change in light burn. In order to do that you're going to want to come up here to edit machine settings and then the settings that you, uh, the, the, it's one setting that you need to change. It's down here under vendor settings. So when you click this error, you're going to get a warning from Lightburn. Uh, safety warning says editing vendor settings is potentially dangerous to you and your machine. There are some things you can uh, mess up in here if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but we're just going to change one. So acknowledge that warning. And then the sixth line down here under vendor settings is enable air assist output we need to set that to true. Initially it'll be set to false, but once you set that to true, that's going to allow the wind pin and the status pin uh, to trigger your solenoids uh, for this air assist. Once you get these, once you get this set to true, go ahead and save your new setting, uh, save, save it to file uh, as you normally would just to back up all of your settings, and then make sure you hit write to machine. You should get a a change here that says controlling settings were written successfully. Once you've done that, go ahead and reset your machine so that it pulls in uh, and kind of boots off those new settings. Now, I don't want to uh, make it sound like I figured all this out on my own. I want to give uh, credit where credit is due. And I got this tip uh, from Brant from Bearded Builds. Uh, he's one of the admins in the Omtech uh, support group. And in his uh, video upgrade, upgraded air assist for Chinese and Omtech CO2 lasers. Around the 11 uh, minute mark he kind of goes through all this and this is where I found out that that uh, setting in light burn needs to uh, be true. So thanks uh, um, thanks to Grant. appreciate uh, everything you've been doing for the group. Uh, now that we have that set we'll be able to come back into light burn and test uh, that our machine and our new air assist is properly functioning. Okay, so now we're ready to test our installation. So I've just set up some text here. I've got air assist off on one layer and that's set uh, up here and you can see that this is toggled for no air. So that 
when uh, the machine is engraving those words it should just be uh, using the low pressure solenoid so we should see the LED light on that solenoid come on and then when it goes to engrave uh, this blue layer with air the words air assist on um, we see that air is set uh, to output on that and so when it does that layer we should get um, our high pressure solenoid to come on for that so we're gonna go ahead and send the job to the machine and we should see one of our solenoids light up and then the other uh, light up for the second engraving so let's see what happens alright so for our first one there we've got our low pressure uh, solenoid on and the uh, machine is in busy engraving those words Now through the magic of video editing, we'll go ahead and uh, jump ahead as we finish this first job and we should get uh, the light on our high pressure solenoid uh, to come on. I hope you found this video really informative and I hope the system uh, works for you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and, uh, and ask. I'll be uh, more than happy to answer your questions down below. But as always, if you like what I'm doing here, please uh, hit that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. We're growing slowly and I hope uh, that I can continue to uh, bring information uh, to the community and that you all will inspire me to try new things and we can uh, keep on burning together.